North American and European trucks have traditionally been designed using different approaches, bearing in mind their specific markets, geographies, customers, and other factors. Semi-trucks are bound by a multitude of rules and regulations given their immense size and weight that also play a major role in shaping them to be purpose-built to fit each governing environment. Semis typically run on diesel, which is also a source of architectural influence. However, now with the advent of electric vehicles, semi-trucks are being completely redesigned from the ground up. So what's the difference between some of the most popular types of American and European trucks? What are their pros and cons? And how will they stack up against their electric counterparts? And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. One of the most popular North American semi-trucks is the classic long-nosed truck. This Class 8 vehicle is most commonly sold by Freightliner, a division of Daimler, which has a staggering near 40% market share in the United States. The engine on these types of vehicles is located in front of the driver, which allows the cab space to be much larger. This is an important consideration for the classic American truck, as they're typically run by owner-operators, meaning that many truckers benefit from having sleeping quarters within their vehicles and other amenities for long-term stays, since they'll effectively be living out of their trucks for extended periods of time. When purchasing one of these trucks, there's many advanced customization options such as adding a Murphy bed, dining table, extra seats, flat screen TVs, and more to truly make it a home on wheels. These vehicles are also seeing new life as Freightliner along with other industry players are starting to build similar style electric versions in order to try and maintain their market share as the industry shifts to EVs. One of the key transitioning factors for going electric is the economic savings between the cost of fuel and the cost of electricity. To power an electric motor costs a fraction of that of a combustion engine on an equivalent cost per mile basis. Electric trucks must carry around large battery packs, but the technology has finally gotten so efficient that it makes EVs tremendously viable for short and medium range trips. Cutting costs is of obvious importance to truck operators, but also may translate to lower prices for consumers by reducing the cost of transporting goods, which makes its way into the price of the item itself. Freightliner's eCascadia, which is the electric complement of their Cascadia truck, is ideally suited for short haul routes with depot-based charging. Now, the European style truck has some major differences as compared to the North American design. First off, the market is dominated by Mercedes in Europe, which has the same parent company as Freightliner in the US, being Daimler in both cases. Heavy duty trucks are popular in Europe and also growing rapidly in Asia. The European style truck is known as a cab over truck as the driver sits on top of the engine in the ICE version. This may slightly reduce comfort as sitting right above the wheels and the engine could cause more vibration for the driver. However, the cab over design has a wide field of view and isn't occluded by the nose of the truck. This compact design also allows for a much shorter cab, allowing it to be under 10 feet. In Europe, the longer length of the cab isn't as important since owner operated vehicles are less common. This also allows for a shorter wheelbase, which increases maneuverability, which is very valuable for many of the narrow and windy roads in Europe. This is contrary to the United States, where trucks spend the bulk of their time on highways that have large, wide lanes, and therefore reduced turning radius and maneuverability is more acceptable. Some of these vehicles have wheelbases near 20 feet long, or almost twice as long as the European-style trucks. Now, there are various regulations on combination vehicle length, that is, a vehicle with a tractor and a trailer. North American trucks have no limit on the tractor portion of the combination truck, while the trailer is limited to 59 feet. And in Europe, the full length of the combination truck and trailer cannot exceed a total of 61 feet or 18.75 meters. And so that helps to explain another reason why the cabs and wheelbases on European trucks must be so short in order to be able to leave room for more cargo. 
Now the electric versions of these trucks will have similar specifications in terms of size and wheelbase. The motors sit between the wheels and because there's no engine, the manufacturers of these vehicles have space to add a front trunk or frunk, which can be seen on the Tesla Semi. The Tesla Semi appears more like a cross between the North American and European trucks. They're just starting to be produced at Tesla's factory in Nevada, with the primary market being the United States, at least for the foreseeable future. All electric trucks, including Tesla's, are currently being produced in very low volumes since they require huge battery packs which are in tight supply. Aspirationally, Tesla aims to produce 50,000 semi-trucks per year over the next few years, powered by its 4680 battery cells, which are also in the process of ramping up volume. Current Tesla semis being produced have yet to use the larger 4680 form factor and likely rely on the 2170 cells already used by Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y. As per Tesla's battery day presentation, the battery cathode used in the semi aims to have high nickel content and likely uses the NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum cathode cell that Tesla's Giga Nevada factory already produces for its higher performance vehicles. Although Tesla hasn't given the exact specifications, it's estimated that the wheelbase of the semi is about 13 feet long, so closer to the length of the European truck wheelbase. Chief Executive Elon Musk has said that the Tesla semi will be a very spry truck that can be driven around like a sports car. Tesla has put the driver's seat in the center of the vehicle with two large displays that can be used for anything from mapping and logistics to web browsing and infotainment. This is similar to the features available in other trucks, and Tesla is using a minimalistic approach to have everything as compact as possible using their software technology. Furthermore, electric vehicles have the advantage of instant torque, allowing them to be more nimble than their diesel counterparts. They also generate far less noise, which is important to bystanders, especially as there are noise restrictions in Europe, which is not an issue for an EV, but is a design consideration for a combustion engine truck. Now the Tesla semi-truck has four-wheel drive and the vehicle has six wheels. It, in a sense, uses a plaid configuration, meaning that one of the rear axles has two motors, one for each wheel, and the other rear axle has one motor which controls two wheels. The front wheels are not powered. Now Tesla does produce a very efficient plaid motor for the Model S and Model X plaid performance vehicles. This is a carbon sleeve wrapped motor that produces some insane power Although Tesla hasn't confirmed if this type of motor will be used in the semi-truck or if it will be a similar motor to the one found inside the Model 3 or Model Y. These motors are still extremely powerful as Tesla demonstrated the ability to move hundreds of thousands of pounds by pulling airplanes, semi-trucks, and heavy loads using the Model 3 type motor. Now one of the potential mistakes being made by the traditional semi-truck manufacturers is that they appear unwilling to truly change the form factor of the truck itself. While they have to redesign the truck from the ground up in order to accommodate a battery pack and electric powertrain and remove the engine and other components conventionally used in an ICE car, the physical shape of the body of the vehicle generally has stayed the same when moving from diesel to electric. This may benefit consumers in some ways, such as with maintaining familiarity, but it could hurt the truck specifications and performance. The European cab over vehicle may be highly affected by this since it has a large, basically flat frontal surface which acts as a giant wind sail generating unnecessary air resistance. Traditional semi-trucks have a drag coefficient from 0.5 all the way to as high as 0.9. For reference, a long cylinder shape traveling down the road would have a drag coefficient of 0.8, which isn't very aerodynamic, while the Tesla Model S has a low drag coefficient of just over 0.2. This could have a drastic impact on vehicle range, as with a larger drag coefficient, the car would be fighting the wind, especially at higher speeds. Now, fossil fuel-based vehicles store a lot of energy in the form of diesel in this case, and are fairly inefficient to begin with. So aerodynamics historically has played a role, but not a major role in the vehicle's efficiency. Electric vehicles store far less energy on board and must therefore take any and every efficiency gain that they can get. And so both the North American and European designed trucks 
will find themselves up against the Tesla Semi in the electric world, a truck which has a drag coefficient of 0.36, which is unheard of in the heavy duty trucking industry. Now to be clear, this is the drag coefficient of the shape itself. In practicality, drag is also influenced by the frontal area of the vehicle. For instance, a much larger truck would have to sift through more air, and at the same time the vehicle could be pulling a large trailer which effectively changes the shape of the front side of the truck. When Elon Musk introduced the Tesla Semi, he spoke of having flaps that could mold over to cover and line up with a trailer in order to limit air resistance. Moreover, vehicle design has been influenced due to the rules and regulations in both North America and in Europe. For the latter, road speeds are limited to about 55 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour, whereas in North America, trucking companies usually limit their drivers to go as fast as 65 miles per hour or 110 kilometers per hour, and so American style trucks are designed to gain efficiencies when driving at higher speeds whereas at lower speeds, aerodynamics are a little less important. Now a diesel-based semi-truck could have a range of 1,000 to 1,500 miles on a single fill-up. This is perfect for long-haul trucking, but electric vehicles are simply not there yet. The range of a Tesla semi is 500 miles with a full load, and Tesla estimates that 80% of routes are below 400 miles, a number which is roughly echoed by other industry players as well so they will be entering the short to mid-range hauling market. However, due to inefficiencies and or smaller batteries, the traditional trucks may be at a disadvantage. The E-Cascadia, aimed at the American market, has a production range as high as 230 miles, carrying an average size load, which is less than half the range of a fully loaded Tesla Semi. Furthermore, the Volvo FH, based on the European design, is even lower at 300 kilometers, which is about 187 miles of range. Now, because of the lower range of electric vehicles, frequency and speed of charging becomes highly important. It's certainly slower to charge up a battery than to fill up a truck with fuel, which could take 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the fuel tank size. However, truck drivers must take breaks. In North America, truckers can drive a maximum of 11 hours per day with some exceptions, and in Europe, this is only 9 hours. However, drivers must be allowed to take at least 30 minute breaks after doing 8 consecutive hours. As electric vehicle makers build out their charging networks along highways and truck routes, it will become more convenient to take breaks and charge the vehicle at the same time. Tesla is starting to install semi-truck chargers that can fill up to 70% capacity or about 350 miles in just half an hour. This 350 miles is still more than the maximum capacity of its electric competitors. Freightliner's E-Cascadia can charge up to 80% of its battery in 90 minutes, while the European-style Volvo FH takes 2.5 hours for a complete charge which may be detrimental given its total 187 mile range. Now again, these vehicles can be charged overnight by parking at a depot or charging station, and although the diesel trucks fill up much faster and have higher range, the cost is far less per mile for an EV, as long as slow charging times or frequent charging needs doesn't disrupt the actual shipment of goods. Now, safety of these extremely heavy moving objects is of concern, which is why the U.S. has imposed an 80,000 pound limit, along with other specific allowable axle limits, and weights can vary across states. In Europe, there's a weight limit of 40 metric tons, which is 88,000 pounds. Now, the gross vehicle weight limits have been increased for EVs in the U.S. to 82,000 pounds. Heavier loads are more dangerous, as they are harder to stop, easier to roll, and result in more wear and tear on roads and bridges. But the truth is that without increasing the weight limits, the industry wouldn't be able to leverage electric trucks which have massive batteries to carry around. They argue that there would be more trucks on the road and therefore more delays and higher industry costs without them. Now, electric vehicles do have some advantages with instant torque and better response time, but they're still limited by physics in how fast they can slow down and stop a certain amount of mass moving at a high speed. Interestingly, advances in driver assistance safety features can help to react much more quickly than a driver 
to slow the truck down even just a few hundred milliseconds faster than a human would, which could make a large difference in terms of safety. Tesla Semi's three motors allows for torque vectoring, which gives more control, and during the initial Tesla Semi unveil, Elon Musk stated that this control, along with the software, makes a very dangerous jackknifing scenario impossible. Additionally, electric trucks have a lower center of gravity with the battery near the bottom of the vehicle and no engine, which can reduce the risk of rollover when compared to their diesel counterparts. Now, North American and European trucks have been influenced by many factors, including regulations and the types of features that buyers are looking for based on how the vehicles are used. But do you think that the form factors of these vehicles should remain the same upon transitioning to electric powertrains, or are manufacturers doing themselves a disservice by preserving familiarity over performance? And do you see diesel trucks still being used far into the future, or will electric vehicles start eating into their market share due to being good enough for a large percentage of routes while greatly reducing costs? For more information, have a look at our previous Tesla semi truck videos. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.